There were so many things happening and so decided right off the bat that we're going to build a studio. So we'll build one first. So we built this one first and this was our, the studio which we used for television and radio but never used to record in. We never recorded anything in here. In fact, never recorded anything other than the sound on sound. Of all the hits we ever made, none were ever made on a multi-track machine. The most fun we had was sound on sound. And it was the most difficult way of recording. Well, when we moved here into this studio, I wasn't here, it was a matter of weeks. That was in 53. And the idea struck me to make a multi-track machine. So I went to West Trex. West Trex turned it down. I was going to have sprocketed tape. We stood outside, my friend Vern and I, Vern Carson. Vern says, don't you have a ticket, you and Mary, where they include going to San Francisco? I said, I don't know. So I looked at the ticket and I said, yeah. He says, well, we can go up there for nothing. Why don't you give me Mary's ticket? You take yours and we'll eat that up. And we got a round trip to San Francisco. So what's up there? So he says, Ampex. Ampex. We get on the plane and go up there and we go over to Ampex. And within 15 minutes of the meeting, it was a big yes. <laughs> well, what it is is a, the very first multiple tape recorder. And uh, I got Ampex to build it for me. And it's an eight track, uh, uh, it's eight, eight, eight tapes. And what we did is uh, we had Ampex build this uh, one inch tape assemble, uh, transport. And uh, then we had to have a console to marry to that, which is behind us here. And if you, if you look at this, uh, it has a monitor mix, it has its uh, rotary pots and so forth, and its select buses and whatever. And what it amounts to is that uh, you can't get along without having this to marry to that to marry to that. It all becomes one unit. And oddly enough, uh, W.C. Fields was the first one to see me uh, do a, a multi-track recording, but I was doing it on disc. So this, this back in 1945. And uh, he, he says, you know, he says, you remind me of an octopus. And he says, you know, I played banjo on the stage and so forth and so on. We got talking about it, but octopus stuck in my mind. He called it the octopus. It was named the octopus by uh, W.C. Fields. <laughs> and so when Ampex says, what are we going to call it? So we call that unit over there, uh, the, the multi-track machine, the octopus. <laughs> Uh, anyway, this is the first 8-track uh, uh, created in 1953, and we finally sunk this mother in 1956. And when that feeds into this board here, if you look down here, right here, it says OCT. Well, that console was married to Mary to this 8-track uh, machine and this transport here. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was the first one to come out with this idea in mind where you can assign anything to any track. Octopus, of course. Of course. Of course. <laughs> and where did that come from? It came from W.C. Fields. Oh, yeah. And of course we had no idea that there was going to be such a thing as stereo. And we unconsciously made it stereo. And so when stereo come in, the board didn't have to be changed at all, and we were right on down the road with it. Um, does it still work? Of course, yes, it works very good. It's the same 15, 30 inches per second, and, and uh, it's right in there. It's got everything on it the new one's got. And that was when, when the, the whole world changed, and uh, we said, well, okay, we're going to do that. And that same time, across the hallway, they were working on video. 
So the first video and the first eight track were side by side. So when you break for lunch, you go across the hall and see what the other guy's doing. So we saw both of them born at the same time. 